I'm Peter Ray. Um, this is March the 30th, 2023, and we are interviewing Nancy McCarthy um, in her apartment. So, let's get underway. We have, uh, we have about an hour that we can spend together. Okay? All right. So, tell us your, uh, your full name and where you were born and how old you are. Let's, let's do the basics here. All right. My name is Nancy. My middle name is Horton. My maiden name, McCarthy. Uh, I um, was born in New Jersey. Uh, my family were living in Maplewood. I was New Jersey outside of New York, and okay. I'm 89 years old. You're 89 years old? Yes. Okay. When did you come to the, to Deerfield, and, and why are you here? I mean, how did you happen to choose being here? Well, I came to, I will be celebrating my 10th anniversary here on April 6th of, of this year. I 10th anniversary. In 2000. Okay. Um, my parents, my aunt, had been in life care communities, and as a priest, I saw the advantages of a life care community. Uh, I was living in Florida at the time, <clears throat> but I was coming up to Canuga, the ah. con conference center, uh, in the summer, often for the uh, guest period. I'd also come up for some conferences, and <laughs> one day, <laughs> Well, maybe 15, 14, 15 years ago, uh, I was in the in the lobby, and it was a year after we had had a couple of nasty hurricanes. And I said, "Boy, if I could find a life care community here, I would love to come." And somebody said, "You haven't heard about Deerfield?" And I said, "Well, no, tell me." Well, one, it has a long waiting list. <laughs> Two, it's a bit pricey. And three, it has a bar. <laughs> and I said, bingo. <laughs> now, of course, I went home and did research, but right. uh, everything, you know, I knew what I was looking for. Right. And uh, I just, <laughs> oh, oh. And so I did my research and put my name on the future residency list at that point. Okay. And I never made a mistake on that one. I could not be happier. Good, good. What other places you've lived? Talk about that. Well, um, yes. You I said grew, you grew up in New Jersey. I grew up in New Jersey. All right. Uh, my father worked on Wall Street. He was an investment banker. Okay. And um, then I uh, went to college at Oberlin, Ohio, in Oberlin College in Ohio. In Ohio. Uh -huh. A fabulous place. Uh, I married my first husband. Uh, that's another incredible story. But we uh, we married at the end of my junior year. He was an army officer, and uh, I'm back and finished. And we were sent to Hawaii, where we were at uh, huh. Schofield Barracks, and then at um, Fort Fort Shafter because he became the um, aid to a, a general at that point. Okay. And um, then they came back to, well, we had been in Fort Bragg, well, anyway, Fort Benning, uh, for, and uh, then Fort Jackson, South, uh, and- uh, This is all Army, is that All right? Army, okay. he was a, a graduate of uh, VMI. Okay, all right. And um, from Fort Jackson, he was sent to Vietnam as a, an advisor. Not it was just a little, that, 1962, just prior to the breakout, I think, of the full war, and um, he um, was killed in, in with another officer in a road ambush. Do tell. And it was so unusual at that point that it made the first page of the New York Times. Right. Right. So. Um, I stayed in Columbia for a while, ended up Columbia moving in, in far. South Carolina. Some of it's a okay. little right. messy, okay. <laughs> but uh, moved uh, down to the Boca Raton area of Florida and stayed in that area. Uh, that's sort of 
between Palm Beach and in Miami. Okay. And right. um, they're not the happiest part of my my life, but uh, yeah, uh, I stayed in that area. Uh, until I came here, you know, it just uh, a lot going. Some of it good, some of it. <laughs> well, when you're when you when you're 28 and have been shocked the way I was, I had some not good years, but right. uh, then. Uh, it, it, I, it sounds like you spent most of your adult life then. A good it, bit of it, and then I, um, and that's another whole story. Ended up becoming I mean, uh, going to <coughs> seminary in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, Virginia okay. Seminary, and that's a it's like a mid really midlife change, and uh, loved every minute of it. Loved okay. being in the seminary, and it was ordained a priest in 1988, and stayed in Florida until I came here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, under 89 is a lot of history. Yeah, yeah. One of the things we're 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 interested in is is curious about what you know about your uh, your ancestors and what 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 might you tell us? Well, um, my father's family, um, the Hortons came to this country very early uh, and uh, landed and came to the New York area. They landed, I think, in Long Island because there, uh, towards the tip of Long Island, uh, they, there is the Horton Point Lighthouse. Ah. So, we know that the, the, that part of them, then they were in New York State. I had relatives in Binghamton, and, um, but my father was an, uh, an only child, he just, and his father died when he was about 16. Okay. So I knew some cousins on that side of the family. The other side of the family is, um, were, were of German descent and came from, I think, Anyway, I know they came from Germany, and my great grandmother had a good, good, strong, strong will and a strong, <laughs> a strong accent. Uh, and um, they were in the Philadelphia area. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, my interestingly, uh, I, but my grandparents lived just a couple of blocks away, so I was. They were very important in my life, and. Um, we said, well, it was interesting. My grandfather, Ernest Wester, became a dentist. And the story that he told me was, uh, though I didn't know much about his family, is that, the, 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 that family had some kind of a factory, and there were a couple of boys and so forth. And his father met a dentist, and he thought the dentist mm -hmm. was a really good thing. And but one of the boys should be a dentist. One of the boys should be a dentist. And okay. literally, packed up my grandfather with his one suitcase and sent him to the University of Pennsylvania. And it turned out that my grandfather had wonderful manual dexterity. Yeah. And the, the father must have known what he was doing because he became a very, well, I mean, yeah. a good dentist and enjoyed what he was was doing. And uh, I spent a lot of time with my my grandparents. With your with and, those grandparents, um, okay. My as I said, my father was an only child, um, and my my mother had one sister, who um, never married. Okay. So it was you know it was a, a, I didn't grow up with cousins or anything like that, but I did have a a close. Okay. Close did, family. Did you move around as a child? No, or did okay. not. In uh. fact, um, I, grew, I was in a couple of houses in Maplewood, but not, but, uh, and Maplewood, New Jersey, and the uh, town next to it, South Orange, had a fabulous school system. Uh. One of the best in the state. 
And my parents would not move out of that area because they said there was no private school better than the, that. And it was. It, okay. it, 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 I, nothing's the same now. What, what do you remember about the house or houses you lived in? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have very little memory of the first one because it was quite small when I went to the one right down from the, from the school. Uh, and, but it was, um, and that's when my, my brother was born. Yeah. Um, uh, but, um, you know, it was uh, three bedrooms, one bathroom, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but a very, you know, a very comfortable house, a, a garage in the back, and, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but I was just one, to, one house between me and the school grounds, so that was re really nice. And then, when I was in my early teens, my father decided um, we needed a better house, and, he, and I, I said, he was self-made, he was amazing. And I, I do remember this, that, that my mother was looking at, at houses and brown boys, excuse me, um, and she came came home and said, Leonard, I found that the house is perfect, it's on Prospect Street, uh, anyway, and and it uh, it was a, a brick colonial with just really big yard or a beautiful house, and my father got on the phone and made an offer. <laughs> I said, you didn't have seen the house. If Gladys likes it, it's perfect. <laughs> and she found nice. it. So I do remember. I mean that house very very well, and uh, it, uh, my brother and I were on one side of the house and shared a bathroom. You know, it was, and it was, so that was the house I was married. To. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about the neighborhood you grew up in. It, you you described the schools as very good, but what was what was the communities like? What were they um, like? Was, were there places that people came together or? What, yeah, what, yeah, it was a. Um, it was a, a, a lot of the, a lot of the people didn't work there. They worked in New York. They worked in New York. They commuted on the, on right. the Lackawanna Railroad. I had good friends, uh, and um, I know, it just it just was a very comfortable community with a little downtown area, and uh, I can remember. You know, the Driscoll's grocery store and the hardware store and the uh, shoe store and the, uh, the son of the shoe store owner was in my class and it was, it was a very sure. close-knit com um, bedroom community. Uh, it was not integrated at the time. Right. Um, unfortunately, it, I, I think everything, unfortunately, has changed. But, um, but it sounds like it was quite comfortable. Oh, it was a very, I was really blessed because my parents were incredible people, both yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, as I said, my father was so made, one of the gentlest, kindest people you can imagine. And uh, even though he started with nothing, I mean, he, I think he told me the only time he was audited in on his taxes was because of his charitable giving. Was the what? Charitable giving. Ah, okay. He helped more people <laughs> when he died. Uh, my mother was very active uh, in the community. She was on the school board. Uh, she had her own identity, and yet she was always whatever made Lynn happy. I mean, he, she was managed to balance that. Right. So uh, she, uh, I, I really look back at the example that they they said to me. <laughs> And uh, the way they disciplined us in their reading, and uh, um, and I think remember the two things that she said to me, which I will never forget. One of them you may have heard: if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. The other one was: yeah. there is no excuse for bad manners. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And uh, I'd like to tell some people. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I was really blessed with a very secure, and I went to camp, yeah. and uh, 
Yeah. It, it, you know, I had, I had, and I had good friends. The the the, the word blessed sounds like oh, like exactly. it's, it's a good I look word. Look back at uh, the what they taught me and the examples of the yeah they yeah. set. Yeah, mm -hmm. you mentioned school, but talk a little bit about the schools you went to and what do you remember about them? Well, I was always a very good student, so that yeah. made it nice. Uh, the grammar school, then the junior high, which was down the way, and we all walked to school. And then the high school, which was, was Columbia High, which was the two, commun the two communities, Maplewood and South Orange. Excellent schools, good friends. <laughs> what I was thinking this morning was I was not, I was a good student, I was active, but I uh, was not one of the glamour girls, okay? But I had a, a not, not a cheerleader, I did play in the band, I played the clarinet, but um, when they first let girls play, anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, I had, there were seven of us from the two, from the two communities that kind of did things, that's fun together. And one of our, one of my good friends used to call, because we were not the glamour girls, called us the sexy seven. <laughs> <laughs> but we, you know, I had good friends and uh, I was, I guess, on the student council and yeah. I did, I just, I, I was always, appropriately active. Okay. Were there some subjects that you were drawn to or you were better at than others or that you really liked? And, and what do you remember about teachers? Oh, great teachers. Um, I, was, I was, believe it or not, I was good at math. Okay. Um, and I took physics and I took French and Latin and I took a regular college prep. But, uh, I remember one teacher who was really good in history, and we were all sitting in you know, He said, you docile note-takers, stop arguing with me. <laughs> and they tried to teach us to think. Okay. All right. Okay. So I know I had um, a, a very good childhood, and as I said, I was a good student. And so once I, my mother well, was very active with Sweeper College, and was honored by them, and uh, they, but uh, that neither my neither my parents would said I had to go to any particular college. Okay. But they did say, pick a school that's worthy of your gifts. You are a good student. So my mom and I traveled around, uh -huh. and I got to Oberlin. And I said, this is a whole new experience. Right. It's co it's co-ed. It, it was they have the they have the. Um, Musical music conservatory, everything about That's it right. said to me, "This this is something I need." I've been I've been to a girls' camp when everyone was going to the girls' schools, and I said, "I don't think this." It's 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 an intuition that you need. I said, "So I apply," yeah. and they told me, "You just apply anywhere you want, you'll get it." It sounded like it just felt right. But it felt right. It felt right, and yeah. I have never, never regretted the uh, education that Oberlin gave me, and the opportunity to um, with the music. Uh, they uh, they had a concert series, Cleveland Orchestra, all that, and I could I could take advantage of it, although I wasn't. And when my mother was a great, great believer in the in the liberal arts education. Okay. She said, it doesn't really matter what you might major in, because a liberal arts education can, can uh, teach you to think. So I didn't really know what I'd major in when I went out there. But when we had the, um, a required course in introduction to, to art and fine arts, and they had a fabulous museum, I said, I just looked at the catalog and I said, oh yeah. Huh? And, it, and and when, now I look back, I love it. Yeah. I, and but again, hearing my mother say it, it's it's a liberal arts education yeah. is what you need. And my father, although he had not, he did not take a liberal arts. He bullet, he totally went for that. And uh, so that was um, just a, 
<laughs> and you know, when at midlife, when I went to seminary, all the background I had and art couldn't have been better because okay. uh, so much was religious art and, we, and uh, the, the background. It sounds like you felt real fortunate about the kind of education you had. Oh, blessed. Yeah. Yes, very, very fortunate. Yeah. There's okay. that word blessed again. Yeah. Well, I can't. <laughs> I do. Uh, uh, I use it, yes. Yeah, it's a good uh, word. I, I, mean, I was, I was fortunate. And having, like everyone else, had my trials and so forth, mm -hmm. when I look back. Mm -hmm. Tell me about holidays. What do you remember? Um, were there certain kind of traditions that you had? At, at, oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and, and which holidays seemed to be real important? Um, well, Thanksgiving and Christmas were, okay. were big. I, I'm trying to remember. The, I, I do remember that I think it was Thanksgiving. Some of the relatives from Philadelphia would would come up, and my my uncle, my aunt Kate and Uncle Charlie, and Uncle Charlie was a big clown, and, and so forth. And sometimes it was about our house. Sometimes it was my grandparents, as I said, they were well two blocks away, and I could cut through. Um, and and um, Christmas was usually at our house. I think my my, my mother was a good plain cook because my father liked plain food. But you know, they'd get a fresh turkey and okay. and so forth. So uh, okay. The, the, uh, how how would you celebrate Christmas? Is there any specific way? Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying. To, well, just with a big, yeah. But I do remember when I was small, and we all believed Santa Claus sure. and so forth. That my mother would read Christmas Eve. We, my mother would read the night before Christmas, mm -hmm. and, and somehow. My father had disappeared, but he went down to the basement <laughs> and said, go to bed. My brother and I tore upstairs, and then they, they I think they hid the gifts in the attic. And when I, if I heard this little sound above, I was sure it was Santa on the roof. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. but I do remember Daddy, <laughs> they had a coal furnace, and he would... <laughs> wow. Okay. Those are wonderful memories. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Right. Now, if, if it's okay, would you talk a little bit more about your husband? You said you met in, in college. Is that right? No, my, oh, that's an, another absolutely crazy story. Um, when I was nine and a half, I, uh, my parents decided it was time. It would be good experience for me to go to camp, and I found this camp in New Hampshire called Camp Allegro for Girls. And uh, the owner came by, and I went there. Anyway, the, and I love camp. Anyway, uh, at the camp, helping out in the summer was a young man by the name of Mac, Walter McCarthy. If he, I was nine, he was 14. Uh oh. And he was went to a military prep school where the owner of the camp was a coach. Okay. And they, uh, there was a family connection. And he uh, invited Mac to come up and just help, just do chores. Uh, uh, help with the barn, or help with, around the barn, although we had it. You know, um, just whatever. And I laid out, I said, in fact, I've got a picture in the other room. Eyes on him, and I thought he was the most handsome man I ever saw. <laughs> and he would come back in the summer when he could yeah. to help out at the <clears throat> camp. And um, I went, I can't, I continued to go up there through being a counselor in training and, and a counselor. And I would see him off and on and everybody thought he was <laughs> handsome. And I can, this is truth. My freshman year in college, I was dating a few guys, and I can remember sitting on my bed and saying to myself, Nancy, 
get over this. You, have, you have sent Mac McCarthy up as your idol, and he hadn't that paid any attention to you. Get over it. There are a lot of nice people out there. Mm -hmm. And I had this long talk with myself. That summer, he invited me out. Ah, oh, okay. All right. Did yeah. you you married then after college? Is that right? I actually married. My family was thrilled. They loved him. I mean, I met him. Um, we were engaged when I was still in college, and then I say, how did that work? He he was in he was you know he graduated from VMI was in the army and um, he said that what what happened was that they they said they were going to send him to Korea or something but if he some something the the deal was that he, that it was possible for him to extend. The um, tour and then go to Japan at the end of that, and his wife could join him. Anyway, there was some kind of a deal that, so I, my family were fine. So I got married at the and got and set it up with the school, mm -hmm. yeah, because of <laughs> Dean Dollar. <laughs> uh, so we were married at the end of my junior year, spent the summer together. Oh. Actually, they changed everything on his orders, but uh, that whole year he was on maneuvers and ranger school, and, and so we, we were together, and it yeah. was, you know, spent the first summer together, I went back and graduated, but it was so interesting that uh, he, we could, could hardly been together that year because of uh, all the school. I know ranger training was one and maneuvers was another and what, you know. So uh, when I graduated, we went to Fort Bragg. He was airborne at that point. And from there we were sent to Hawaii. Okay. And my son was born. You, you, you must not have been married very long. I mean, no, it sounds like... No, no. We were born, we were married in... Let's see. Fifty-five, and he was killed in sixty-two. Wow! My son was three. Wow! Wow! And, and no, no one after that, or you didn't get remarried, or anything. Well, I had a uh -oh. brief <laughs> nothing, and later, um, I did marry a widower. Who, when he wasn't drinking, was really sweet. I raised three stepchildren. Okay. And <clears throat> the good thing about that is, although we, I, I think he divorced me, but I walked out when he when he got abusive. Oh. And. Um, okay. So, uh, but I have three stepchildren, and the amazing thing is that my step. <clears throat> Grandchildren and do you, have do you close to me. Yeah, do you consider them still a part, kind of an active part of well, your yeah. life? Oh, I do. My stepson has uh, has uh, some problems of of um, addiction, but he's in treatment, and he oh he always sends me flowers and mm -hmm. and we talk. Uh, one stepdaughter has a lot of problems, and she's not talking to anyone right now. Yeah. And then the the other one, Sarah, she's planning to come on Mother's Day. She's a she's the drama queen of all time. I mean, there are times <laughs> when I had, to, oh gosh, was she something? What? Tell me about your son. I, uh, yeah. Oh, well, just okay. Me. Sure. And now I have a great granddaughter. Her oh. daughter Catherine and Catherine and I are. It's amazing. She's more like me. But anyway, my son, um, uh, yeah, he um, he's had his struggles. Uh, he um, right now he, he's living in Florida, and uh, he um, works at at um, Nova University in the business school there. And he's if he ever because of COVID and some eye problems, he hasn't finished his doctorate. This is the flunk out kid. Who, and uh, there are two, two children, yes, divorced there, married too soon. Um, unfortunately, and I don't want to dwell on this, I'm close to my 
granddaughter Melissa who is married and living outside of Raleigh and she and her husband have been here and um, unfortunately my grandson Kevin Jr. has lost his mind he just suddenly he married someone it's like he married into a cult mm. he just he, he changed his name to her name and has had cut off everybody I haven't uh -huh. you know just it's I don't know I, nobody mm. under nobody under the cut off his mother cut off his father cut off his sister who he was like this with it doesn't make any sense at all I and mean, that has caused me mm. Great stress, including physical. Well, yeah. I I worked that through, you know. Yeah. So, so, so medical care, some right. good counseling, a lot of prayer. Right. Uh, what well, What about siblings? Did you have? Or did you have my a, brother? I had a younger brother, Bill. Okay. <clears throat> who I named? You named? Well, I just remember the dinner table conversation because my parents. I don't know. Really, really, was it, it had to do with a with it was the baby was a boy or something like the date name and my father didn't want a junior. Well, my best friend Marjorie had a older brother <coughs> named Bill Billy, okay. and I thought he was quite wonderful. And so at one point, I remember clearly, I was like four. I said, "Well, I don't care what you name him. If they ask me what his name is, I'm going to tell them it's." <laughs> and so they named my brother William, William Leonard <laughs> after my father. And my unfortunately, my brother was very successful, married, had four children. Uh, in his 40s, he came down with a unusual neurological disease. Um, and uh, he died in his late, late 40s of oh. that disease. It was... It was it's a cerebral something, cerebral generation. Right. Fortunately, I was in seminary at the time, and I was up there that weekend, so I could be, you know, be there for my for right. my family and see him and and so forth. So, um, and even got back to school later because I uh, stayed for the funeral and so forth. Right. And his wife has never remarried. She's. Um, <clears throat> Near, she's in Richmond, Virginia, okay. and she has some issues. I mean, she's in an assisted living, uh, but uh, yeah. So and uh, okay. I'm, so you you've had some premature deaths in your in your life. A real but part. I think a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I look at what other lives, I can't see that mine's. Okay. All right, let's change. And, and, uh, tell me a little bit about the sexy seven. I, you got my curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> and are you still oh, in, are no, you still in uh, touch with any of these girls or not? Right. We met in high school. Okay. And we just would get together on weekends and just uh, but, uh, that was because Bobby. Oh, I kept in touch with her. I mean, she died. Did she? I think she became an alcoholic. Her mother had died when she was young. Lois was a, a friend of me. Grammar school, her brother died of polio. Yeah, but way back when mm -hmm. we were in grammar school, mm -hmm. brother Dave. Uh, and I've heard from her up until very recently. Um, Phoebe, they're married. I think she's not. I mean, well, when you're 89, there was some of them dropped <laughs> away. Um, but we just this. Yeah. You know, we just do say we we didn't. We just would get together on weekends and so okay. forth, and that. but we all just all went to the same school, and, and we we behaved. I mean, we didn't do anything. It was they were just good friends, but we stayed in touch after college. I'm trying to think. It was Phoebe, um, Elaine. <laughs> anyway, they've all kind of. Uh, well, we st we stayed in touch, just okay. just good right. friends. We'd get together for a meal, or we the best we'd cook something, or yeah. Okay, all right. So, what was your in terms of your own work? Um, did you what, what were your early jobs? What was your first job? Were you well, got actually, paid? Actually, actually, uh, when I was um, for many years, 
I was just a big community volunteer. Okay. I uh, I was uh, very active in the church. I was on the the vestry. I was president of the church women. I was president of the diocesan church women. Uh, I helped found a, a child development center, which in in Boca Raton. Okay. Which was great fun. I volunteered there, and uh, I was just kept busy as, as, as a community volunteer until I everything changed when, in, in my midlife when the call to, to of course ordination of women I was on the floor of the I, I was went to the general convention in 67 when I was on the floor when the vote was taken for the ordination of women and at that point I thought well that's wonderful but I don't know it's it's for me, but I became more active in in the church. I helped you know, be reader, doing doing stuff, helping found a soup kitchen, um, and uh, and one I have several funny stories, but one of them was uh, that I was helping with the funeral, and I can remember it so clearly as I was was reading a lesson. Romans, and we had a lady in the church who lived in one of the apartments we had, and everybody called her Dr. Betty, and she was a strong-willed lady, but she was sitting right down in front of me, and I noticed that she was staring at me. <laughs> so anyway, afterwards, I was walking out through the parish hall, and I heard, Nancy, who oh, gets Dr. Betty? <laughs> While we were in church, the Holy Spirit told me you're going to be a priest. Uh -huh. <clears throat> wow. Okay. And I had a couple of incidents where people kind of yeah. uh, was, were getting at me. Actually, I became a vocational deacon first with, where I stayed. Uh, I studied locally and was going to deacon. But I always said I I never close the door to anything, okay. anything else, and uh, so uh, eventually it, when David divorced me because I was too busy in the church or something I don't remember I talked to the bishop and uh, he um, said I go but go, going back uh, at Kaduga. There was a, they had a spirituality conference um, with um, Alan Jones and Jim Finhagen, who had been my rector when Mac was killed. Anyway, there was a, a woman, one of the early women priests there, and her husband was a priest. And, and, and um, it, was all, it was all great, and at the end, I talking to her husband right in front of the chapel and I said, listen, this has been wonderful. Great conference. Uh, it's nice to meet your wife um, and uh, so forth. And he looked at me. Isn't this in your future? Uh-huh. What? <laughs> Isn't ordination in your future? Uh -huh. And that was sort of my Damascus Road. I said, well, I've got to stop yelling no and listen. And that's when I, everything changed and with the bishop's God. help, I went back through the process and, well, and uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's another thing. But anyway, ended up with no problem cool. going to Virginia Seminary and loved it. Yeah. When you're when you're not working, uh, uh, when you weren't working, uh, w were there interests that you had, hobbies, that kind of thing, um, that that was a, a significant part of your life? Well, different things. Um, I've always been interested in art. See, I've done these icon, these icons. Yeah, you know, I do that down at Canoe, but uh, yeah, you know, art. I love animals too, and so I've had. As a sort of in, particularly in recent years of rescue dogs. So still oh. was my last one and I can't okay. I'm too old to have another one. I do some dog sitting. But um 
You know, um, I, I was very active, and when I was in Florida, I was active raising some orchids and with the Orchid Society. And, okay. Um, but when, when I, but I've discovered I love parish ministry. Oh. When I got, although I was the first woman to go in Southeast Florida to go into full time parish ministry, so that was that was interesting, and, and people wondered if the, I had been. I ended up back at the same church I had been at as a lay person, but everybody wondered if anyone would leave. Because of my, well, huh? we lost one person. <clears throat> we gained several <laughs> okay. because they like. So you were you were a part of that uh, of that change in the church. I would call it, myself second wave. Okay, I, you know, I had I had a lot of firsts down there, but uh, not not. I, I, I think I we were the ones who sort of solidified it, but. Uh, is a, and I, oh, I, another thing that I, I know, don't talk about much, but I did enjoy thoroughly, is I, I, along the way I became a professional parliamentarian. Yeah, and um, so I was parliamentarian for the diocese. Uh, I set up all the, uh, all the diocesan conventions. I script, with, with, the, with the, uh, the dean of the cathedral, we, set, we scripted everything. Uh, the election of several bishops, and that has to be done very, very precisely. Okay. And well, then, then I was a parliamentarian for one of the women's meetings, national women's meetings. And I really enjoyed that because I found when you do it right, it's easy. Right. Because people try to make it too right. complicated. Right. And it makes a big difference. Yeah, it does, yeah. and I love that. I had a wonderful teacher, and uh, it, it was, uh, I guess I don't do that anymore. Another thing I got really interested in when I was um, a priest was, it was, it was never, I understand it's fading out, but Myers-Briggs, I was, could do it. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, you know, I could uh, administer that, and I, I did that for people, and uh, love doing it for marriage counseling. Okay. Because people would say, oh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the way he's at. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had assorted interests. Right. Um, right. right now, I, uh, of course, there's no need for a parliamentarian here. I, I offered the diocese. And they <laughs> so, anyway, it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. All right. I'm, I'm going to, you get to name one person. In your life, who was really influential and wasn't part of your family, who would that be? Mm. Wow. They are so in. You know, one person who was a huge help in our family was my bishop, Bishop Schofield. He became a really good friend and, and advisor and mm -hmm. uh, helped me along the way. And I mean, there have been incredible people, but uh, he was the one. Okay. All right. Um, there's a question here about what kind of challenges have you, have you confronted or have to deal with? What challenges, what have been the difficult things for you? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> of course, after my husband was killed, dealing with that was yeah. the other thing. Right now, <laughs> and I'm dealing with two challenges. One is that I'm losing my hearing that cannot be corrected. Okay. Um, I have to. Um, I have to. Uh, I've, Closed captions and things, and I, I do fine when I can read lips. But if I'm behind somebody, even though you can't, and the fact that I have osteoporosis and I have a, I had a freak accident and I have a compression fracture in my back, and so I have to, I, I'm slowing down. No, oh. but come on. <laughs> 
What's that? What's that all about? What's that all about? <laughs> and I just have to say, I just have to to deal with it and figure out how. I'm, mean, you know, my brother, the one who 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 died of that neurological disease. Mm -hmm. I was with him at one point, and I said, Bill. You never complain. Hmm. You have this terrible disease. He said, sis, when you complain, people don't like you and you don't like yourself either. Oh. And I just kind of thought, okay, I'm not going to complain. I will explain. But I've told people, if I start complaining, okay. shut me up. Okay. It doesn't do you a bit of good. And so I just kind of think, okay, I made it this far. My family is saying, oh, you're going to be 90 next year. <laughs> okay, back here, that's not much. <laughs> All right, well, let's flip that and, and say and ask, what, what is it that just has given you a great deal of joy and satisfaction? Well, joy and satisfaction? Yeah. I think my ministry, oh. working with people, uh, I discovered that, um, much to my surprise, that I really found pastoral care satisfying. Huh. And that is the people I've been able to help. It's just, it, it, it sort of surprised me. I just jumped into it. And I was, but when I was called to the hospital, when I was, some of the people I had to deal with and, and so forth, I thought, you know, if you can make a difference, that's yeah. That has given me great joy, and my my stepchildren, and of course my new great grandbaby. <laughs> <laughs> but the the relationship I have with, but but I think yeah yeah. You've been a part of a lot of changes uh, in, oh. in our culture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you ever felt kind of discriminated against or that, that people treated you unfairly because of who you were or no? No. And <clears throat> uh, I've always had people, <coughs> excuse me, who were around me to help me. Okay. Um, I can remember we had one, when I was a deacon, I had one priest who didn't, um, didn't think much of women. I mean, I think he may have left the church, who knows. But anyway, uh, we, I, we were at a, I was on the executive board or something, for, and uh, we were at his church. And he, you know, normally if there's a deacon there, they read the bad hospital. Anyway, I sat there and behaved myself. And we get to the end, and my bishop, Kyle Schofield, looked around and he said, Will the deacon please dismiss us? Ah. And it was, I mean, there, there were always people in my corner. Okay. And uh, so I dismissed it. So I, uh, I think he would... Uh, David would have um, snubbed me, but the bishop wouldn't allow it. <laughs> Good. No, I didn't. I always, I'm blessed to have people yeah. there for me. Yeah. I I continue to come back to that word blessed. Um, I mean, that's that's that seems like a, it would. Yeah. It, it's a, a a a part of the way you look at your life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the only thing I put up with, and everybody has to. I've had fabulous parents, I've had wonderful people in my life, and I'm spending the last years of my life here at this amazing place, and I have so many friends, I've seen so many acts of kindness and graciousness. And I just want to look at the good side, sure. look at the good things. Yeah. There's no point telling on the bad thing. <laughs> well, as we as we close up, is there is there anything I haven't asked about? Any secrets that you've got that you want to talk about or not? I think I've told you just about, <laughs> about everything. No, no secrets. I just uh, feel so fortunate at this point in my life to be where I am within 
incredible people. Yeah. And I'm not I'm talking only about the residents, but our staff and uh, the people who have been there for me, and I still have a chance to help some people to okay. pay yeah. through the church, or I'm uh, doing a little bit. So I am, it's like, you know, and I don't have any, I wish some, some of the, um, the family problems would go away, but I can't fix. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. I, I don't have it, I have any unfinished business at the moment. Good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for your time. Uh, we've been we've been listening and getting to know Nancy McCarthy, and um, delighted to be able to have done that. And uh, I wish you well. And again, thanks for your time and and your good words. My pleasure. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right.